I think I'm too young for this is just a great phrase, right? Like, because no matter how old you are, like you think these kind of issues are down the road. Right. It's not like you wake up and you're like, I'm ready for sciatica. No. Today's no. the day. I'm <laughs> ready for that to matter. You know, today I'm ready for incontinence. Yeah. Welcome to the Pickleball Recovery Podcast, where we highlight products and practices to help you feel better faster, so you can spend less time stiff, sore, and injured, and more time on the court doing what you love. This podcast is sponsored by AlloMD. Don't just mask pain, eliminate it. AlloMD provides intense relief and advances continual repair for both acute injuries and chronic pain. All natural patented technology developed by doctors to get you back in the game fast without the use of opioids, steroids, or ANSAIDs. AlloMD, harnessing the power of pure natural ingredients that provide deep, penetrating repair. Patented, validated, natural. Learn more at www.allomd.com and make sure to use the discount code PBR at checkout to save $5 off your order. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to Pickleball Recovery. I'm your host, Tim Ringgold. How you doing? How you doing? Did you play any pickleball today? I hope you did. Hey, listen, I got a great episode for you today. I'm super excited. Um, And I do have to warn you, it's a little longer than usual. This is more like a third shot lob than a third shot drop. Wink, wink. Um, And that's just because uh, there was coffee involved. That's all I can say. Uh, I happened to be offered uh, some cold brew coffee before we hit record. And uh, yeah, the uh, the rest is uh, history, as they say, but it's a pretty useful conversation. The prehab guys are amazing. Their content online is phenomenal. You're going to really learn a lot about how to prevent injury through the exercises that uh, Dr. Urash Mitsudi is going to share today. They're super easy to do. There's videos embedded in the YouTube uh, version of this. So if you're listening to this on on Apple or Audible or Spotify, you're going to want to go over to the YouTube channel and watch because you'll notice that we're trying to like describe the exercises in the interview. And then afterwards, I was like, why don't you send me some videos of these exercises? And then we'll just drop the videos into the video itself. And that way people can see what we're trying to talk about. So that will help out a lot. If you just go to YouTube and you search pickleball recovery, you'll find the channel, you'll see the episode. While you are there, wink, wink, could you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and like the video? That helps us a ton because then YouTube recommends the video to more people. That's how you can help out. The other way you can help out is just by leaving a rating on uh, Spotify or on Apple, if that's where you listen to it. It takes like 15 seconds to do it. It's really easy, Uh, but again, makes it more searchable. And then also, if you're feeling super, super generous, leave a comment either on YouTube or on Apple Music, uh, a review on Apple Music or a comment on YouTube, because that just lets me know there are people actually enjoying this content. It does take a lot of time, effort, and money to put this together. Um, but it is in like my quest to kind of pay forward to the pickleball community, um, that which I can create value. Like this is how I see the way that I can help out the community. The community has given me a new lease on life as an athlete, and this is my way to pay back. So if you could just, uh, yeah, hook me up with a comment, that would be awesome. Um, let's see, what else do I want to cover? Um, I want to tell you that pickleballrecovery.com version 2.0 is coming soon. So, um, my goal has always been to be able to create like a review product site for all the products and the practices, like a one-stop shop for all your recovery needs. And it is under construction and it is nearing completion, which, you know, we're like 90% done, which means we're basically halfway there. Ha ha ha. But it's getting close and I'm really excited about it. So stay tuned. Uh, If you're not on the email list, just go over to pickleballrecovery.com, put in your email address there. Uh, You'll get a free copy of my warm up and cool down guide to prevent injuries. Um, But then you'll also be able to, we'll keep you posted on when we launch the site because there will be discounts on a lot of the products that you buy anyway uh, to keep you, you know, uh, recovering well uh, that you can get through this website. So that's the whole point, right? So one-stop shop saves you money, makes it easy. Uh, Hopefully it's a win-win for everybody. So stay tuned. 
if you dig the prehab guys, uh, they have offered a very generous um, deal for my listeners. So uh, they create really, really cool videos on exercises to help prevent injury. So hence prehab instead of rehab. Uh, so let's prevent rehab from ever needing to happen. And uh, I'm super impressed with their stuff. That's why I interviewed them. I found them on YouTube to begin with as a consumer. Uh, if you like their stuff, just go to the prehabguys.com forward slash membership. Just put in the code PBR for pickleball recovery and you'll get a free month's membership to their program. It's super cool. You have to go check out their stuff. Okay. So that's at the prehabguys.com forward slash membership and use the code PBR to get a free 30 day membership uh, in their amazing library of content. Super useful stuff. Okay. So. There we go. Let's get into it. So sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, and I will see you on the other side. Arash Miksudi, thanks for joining us on Pickleball Recovery. Yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. So I have to tell you how we met was uh, through YouTube. Yeah. Because as a pickler who's over 40, now over 50, uh, who has had pain in this, that, and the other thing, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Uh, I have been on YouTube for many a video, right? Mm. For how to rehab or recover uh, all kinds of injuries. And that's where I discovered the prehab guys. Mm. And uh, I was like, first of all, these are great videos. Second of all, as an entrepreneur, I was like, the branding is so good. That's so cool. Prehab. I, I get it. Like I was so on board with who you guys were. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't know we were both in Southern California until mm -hmm. probably like a year after watching your guys' videos and consuming your content and benefiting from it. And then I was like, oh, sweet. Okay, we can do this. Yeah. And, uh, and then I reached out and lo and behold, God bless whoever connected the dots. Yeah. It actually, the email got through. Because you know, when you send an email to info at... You never know. You never know. You just never know where it's going to go. And a human responded. And I was like, there's a human there, you know? And so here we are. Here we are. Here yeah, we thank are. you for the support. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So uh, we're talking today uh, on a couple of levels. First of all, as a clinician, yep. uh, as a physical therapist, uh, I want you to tell a little bit about prehab because uh, it's now bigger than the prehab guys. It's yep. grown. It's now prehab, right? Yep. And so tell tell the listeners a little bit about that story, how you guys got your start and where you are today. Perfect. Yeah. So the three of us, uh, Mike, Craig, and myself started just posting content in PT school. Our first purpose was largely to educate the public about these things that we're learning in school from largely from rehab, but also from our background as trainers and strength and condi conditioning coaches, okay. because we realized in PT, the PT often stopped when someone stopped feeling pain, but that doesn't mean that they're ready to play a sport or get back to an activity, but they thought that they were good to get back to that sport or activity. So what we see in the clinic is this person goes back to their sport and activity, reinjures themselves, comes back to PT and this, it becomes a cycle. And so, yeah, so it's never ending and the issue oftentimes gets worse and worse over time. So what we re realized is we need to educate people on uh, rehab, but specifically with this bridge, the problem we tried, tried to solve is this bridge between rehab to prehab so that people can understand how to safely and effectively get back to their activity. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the initial plan. And then you know, as time progressed, we started posting, people started liking it. It started on Instagram. This was way back when we were limited to like 15 second videos. And, uh, that was 20 end of 2016, early 20, uh, actually early 2016 was the first post. Uh, mm -hmm. but over the years we ended up getting some traction, creating a website, creating programs for people to do at home. And, uh, now, uh, six years later, we have an app where people can take control of their, their health with all these programs and workouts that we've created and allowing them to, um, understand the tools, both from an exercise and educational standpoint to rehab or prehab their whatever body part it is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's, that's where we're at today, trying to help with bridging the gap with, uh, having a problem to our, actually solving the problem. And so whether you're on the rehab, prehab or performance spectrum, we try to have a program or workout designed for you. Nice. And so that's, that's the online business, the in-person business. We're here in Culver city right now. This is where we work with patients and clients to help them get out of pain and get back to whatever activity that they're looking back to getting to. Right now let's talk about productivity, ladies and gentlemen. 
uh, since 2016, on your YouTube channel alone, it says there is something like 7,000 videos or some ridiculous mm. number. I don't know, but I did the math. It was 200 videos a year average uploaded mm. by you guys. Wow. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's insane, a lot. We've, we've created you, a lot. Yeah. You guys have been at it. At it. Yeah. We, we made a commitment basically from that first day that we're going to create content and post content daily. And the consistency was everything. You know, you can have certain posts that blow up or certain content that gets a lot of traction, but then it's very easy to stop when you get busy and there's yep. all these other things that you need to take care of. But we tried to stay committed and make sure that the branding and the the value that we were constantly giving was there. Um, and I had no idea that's how many videos we have, but I know, I know in our exercise library, we have probably 32, 3,300 videos, all tutorial style ex exercise or educational videos that we're explaining um, using our video, using our um, high quality camera that we're uh, filming in 4K. So yeah. all these, all these uh, things add up. And what we also try to do is replace some of the old, old stuff that we filmed way back. Gosh, because it's now cringeworthy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 there's a lot of movement. It's hard to tell what we're saying. I yeah, there's a lot of background noise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look like, yeah, 12. Yeah. It was and before it, you started shaving. Yeah, right. Now, right. now you have a beard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and to all you math majors out there, I know you already corrected my math. 7,000 was like, you know, metaphorical. Because if you do 200 a year times the seven years, you don't get to 7,000. So yeah. it's not 7,000. No. But I'm sure it feels like it. Because yeah. if you're shooting 200 and uploading, because it's not just shooting, it's all the work that goes into then you're editing it, then you're posting it, then you're interacting with people online with the comments, yep. you know, people are asking you questions. Like that's a tremendous commitment to that strategy of helping people through that medium. And that's why I just wanted to really kind of compliment you guys because I know you're in the thick of it, you yep. know, and sometimes you don't realize like the scale and the accomplishment because it's like, I got three more things to do by Monday. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah Never mind what's that. back in the rear view mirror and like what's coming this week. Like I've got deadlines with the next, yeah, yeah. the next thing. And yeah, yeah. And the, the, on that point, it's, uh, it's not just the three of us now. It is the team. Like you mentioned, we have yep. someone here, Kirsten, who is a full-time videographer who helps with all this stuff wow. as well. It would be impossible for us to continue, continue to upload these things. And we've, we've even gone towards the path of creating class style videos. So if you have, shoulder pain, back pain, whatever it may be, uh, we walk you through a full 20 to 30 minute program weekly for like eight to 16 weeks, depending on the program. Brilliant. So that's, that's a, a huge, uh, feat, feat on a, a videography standpoint, multiple camera angles, you know, there's a lot of editing that goes behind that. So yeah, it, it it's, wouldn't be possible with just us. No, no, but it's really smart because you can, as like as a music therapist and as a physical therapist, we can only see so many humans face to face Correct. over the course of a week. So our impact can only scale so big. We can only reach and only help and only heal so many people. So being able to go online, create the app, create the courses, now you can reach exponentially more people, which I'm probably what your experience is. That's so true. So exactly. much more gratifying. Exactly. And there are, there are a lot of countries even that don't have physiotherapy or physical therapy as a profession. There's, there's the doctor and then there's the trainer and there's nothing in between. Well, wow. so, uh, there are a lot of people that reach out to us with that. And also there's a lot of places, even within the States that don't have access, people that don't have access or don't have time to go to see a physical therapist two times a week. Yep. You know, they're busy during the day, or yep. maybe they don't even have, you know, a, a high quality PT. And also we know how healthcare is, is going. The reimbursements are going down. Volume is going up for whatever me medical professional you're you're seeing, so it ends up being where quality ends up con continuing continuing to go down because of that. Yeah, and it's a trend that's not working in the right direction. We want to try to help with moving things, being getting quality care yeah. towards the right direction, nice. making the barrier to entry low to fix your shoulder and back pain. You don't have to wait weeks to yeah. to get that help that you need. It's brilliant. So now let's talk about you as a pickler. Yeah. <laughs> Cause when I reached out to, uh, you know, Craig, uh, is a former soccer player as yep. I'm a former soccer player. And yeah. I was like, Oh my God, no way. Uh, cause that's how I discovered PT was as a patient, you yeah. know? And then I found how rewarding it was. And yeah. it was like flip the switch. But then he was like, yeah, but Arash plays pickleball. So maybe you want to talk to Arash. And I was like, Oh, psh, yes. 
let's, let's do it. talk. Yeah, because now we can go, me, 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 you yep. know, from what you see uh, on the courts and what you hear about as a player, right? Yeah. And what you've experienced what you, in your own body, you know, because when you go up to the line and you start dinking uh, and you're in that ready position crouched and you're not doing it right, like, Oh, it takes a toll. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So tell me, when did you get into pickle? Yeah. Um, so probably, well, I started playing tennis in 2020 and then went into paddle in 2021. And then probably earlier this year, uh, I would say it was my first time playing pickleball. And from there I was like, no more paddle or tennis. I'm, I'm pickle. That's it. And so, I mean, I, I played a couple of games of paddle and tennis since, but it's been like 90% of my racket racket game is, is pickleball. Is now pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. Love and it. I was a former soccer player as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I played uh collegiately, even okay. professionally for a little bit and Rad. hurt my deltoid ligament. And uh, so I sprained the inside of my ankle. That's the opposite of where people what usually people sprain. Yeah. yeah. So I did that and that put me out for a while. That's where I found PT. Like PT decided, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this profession, and uh, and from there, yeah, that's 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 where I'm at now. And I play pretty much. Uh, not I wouldn't say like I'm a competitive. I I play. I feel like I'm competitive, but I mean it's only been a few months that I've been playing. But yeah. I love it, and I nice. get everyone I know into it, or I try to. At yes, least. you're an evangelist. <laughs> yep, so, yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Come, come to the light. Yeah, come. The water's great. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah, uh, you drank the Kool-Aid. It's okay. It's like, you'll be here soon enough. Don't worry. Yeah. Just hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> just come on in. Just don't. don't You're going to get here at some point. Resistance is futile. Yeah. I'm talking to you. You're already in. But, yeah. uh, you know, your friends and family. Yeah. So. Uh, That's funny. Well, very cool. Um, so today we want to talk about how to sell, save people's backs. Yeah. Uh, we were kind of talking about like what areas do we see getting destroyed? And there are many, frankly. Uh, but if there's one that's like, you know, global, yeah. you know, for picklers and non-picklers, you know, uh, it seems to be yeah. back just seems to be getting abused. The highest prevalence of any body part is injury in the low back. And, and it's, it's one of those things too, that, you know, once you have it, you're more likely to experience it again. Mm. And this is where, I mean, this is true for any injury, but yeah. especially true for low back pain. And you see the same issue that I talked about before where, you know, someone thinks they're good they get do the exercises or whatever it may be. Yep. They get back to their sport. Yep. They forget about the exercises that got them to live this pain-free life. Yes. And then they get back to the same position again. So, yes. Uh, it's easier said than done, of yes. course. If, if you can't spend 20, 30 minutes every single day on these certain exercises, but you find the, the high value or high yield movements that will minimize the risk of future injury. It's hard to know that, of course, but there's a lot of factors that go into um, back pain. But, um, but yeah, it's a very common issue, and we, we can dive into it if, if, uh, if that's the next step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just love how you said, you know, as soon as you feel better, you stop doing what got you feeling better. Yeah. Uh, that was me with my rotator cuff last summer. Uh, you know, yeah. stop doing my exercises that weren't beach muscle exercises. <laughs> And yeah. then went back to the beach muscle exercises and was like, oh, I'm still having a lot of pain. Why? Yeah. And uh, yeah, like those uh, bands, I use crossover symmetry yeah. uh, product and they're in, you know, on the wall waiting for me in my garage right now. <laughs> Tim, we're still here and your shoulders still hurt. Yeah. Oh, I know. Just waiting right. for you. Oh, the shame. Oh, the shame. But I think uh, to your point, if there are high efficiency you know, in terms of time, mm -hmm. right? Time invested. It's not so much the energy because what I've noticed with like prehabbing is it's not like gut busting, nausea inspiring workouts. It can burn a little bit, but it's, yeah. it's actually like I didn't just drench myself in sweat. I did very specific exercises that made a very specific body part maybe burn a little bit, but I'm not wrecked like a, a total two hour, you know, uh, high intensity workout, right? right so right. It, it's, it's different the way to think about taking care of this thing. Then I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to spend two hours in there. I'm going to be soaked when I leave. Right. Does that make Especially sense? Especially for athletes because yeah. they're used to pushing themselves, feeling something when they do exercise. Yeah. You know, there, there are some people that are, I mean, this is probably not this audience, but more sedentary individuals where they do a couple of cat cows or whatever it may be. They're right. like, oh wow, this is tiring. And I'm like, okay, well it's, it's a different, it's a different, uh, 
you know, standard that someone has for what tiring is, right. or exhausting is, or fatiguing is. Yep. So, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, especially when we're talking about low back, the exercises are not as challenging. Um, oftentimes with the low back, you actually want to look above and below the chain to make sure there's no issues there. Right. Um, but with that area as well, it's, it's all, everyone has different standards for what challenging may be, yeah, yeah. you know, rotator cuff is different. Most people don't have, uh, endurance or strength in those muscles. And True. regardless of who you are, you do a few reps of, or I mean, once you get to enough volume, you're, you're fatigued and, and you just can't do anymore. Yeah. 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 And, and the other thing I've noticed with doing these kinds, this kind of work is, uh, ego, mm. like I don't need big old kettlebells, barbells, dumbbells, like some of this is body weight and it's like, <gasps> it's all you need uncle, you know yeah. what I mean? And you're like, please, nobody see me doing this struggling, you know, with like, or doing like a, a band exercise with like, you know, it's a, a, the equivalent of like a two pound weight. Right. And you're like gassed after 10, you know, and you're like, I don't want anyone to see me doing this cause I'm embarrassed, Yeah. but these are the, these are the things that work. Right. That's, that's so yeah. I think that's been an, another issue. Like I, I, I often think about like, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. So what are the barriers to people doing it? So like uncovering these barriers. So like time, like, oh, it's going to be two hours. No. Oh, it's going to be this giant workout. Oh, no, it's not actually. No. It's not. It's going to be really a lot easier. Oh, it it doesn't look like work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait yeah. until you try it. Yeah. So those are some of the things that come up for me before we even get into what we can, we can kind of tackle. But let's kind of, let's get in to talk about like, okay. People are playing pickleball. We know we all bend probably at the waist, you know, pro improperly when we're yeah. running up to the kitchen line. Yeah. We're, we're in dink battles and, <laughs> and uh, you know, our, our backs are wrecked afterwards. Um, let's just talk about the low back and, and, it, yeah. and what's breaking down and, and why and yeah. what we can do about it. Well, on, on that, on the previous point too, I wanted to mention that a lot of people, you know, see it's, it's, it's time and energy, but also it's knowing what to do as well. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of people see this content online and there's, it's actually the opposite of when we initially created content. Now that I think about it, initially there was no, uh, content on what you should do for back pain or et cetera, or, yeah. or the hip pain or whatever it may be. Now there is such an abundance of all kinds of information from all different angles on any issue that you would ever want to, to learn about. And it becomes hard to actually pinpoint what you should do because there's so much that people are telling you to do yep. and it's it, the dose is the poison it's it's um you can mm. do the right thing too much and that's not good gotcha you could do the right thing too little that's still not good there you go so uh that's that's something that i know a lot of people struggle with and i didn't realize this at, at first but you know our content is helpful for a lot of people However, they, they re, they, after they go through the program, they, they kind of give us the feedback that the programming was needed because just knowing what to do is the, the very first step. They need to know how many reps, how many sets, how many days per week, yep. how to progress this through a longer period of time. Yep. And that's where the magic happens, not yep. just knowing that first step of where to start. Totally. Um, so that's, that's something uh, that I found interesting. But uh, yeah, let's, let's dive into it. The dink battle has got, got me laughing. Uh, uh, I'm... I'm not too familiar with a lot of the terms. I've, I'm pretty okay. new to pickle. Yeah, as well, I was like, but... you're not in dink battles <laughs> no, yet. If you're only in a couple of months, so no, it's, no. it's okay. You're still banging I'm, away. Yeah, just I'm just slamming it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, with, with the, the leaning over thing makes a lot of sense. And that's where uh, actually for, for me as someone that has a history of low back pain as well, yep. I've noticed uh, that, that initially actually being an issue. But uh, taking a step back, basically back pain. Uh, what we can, if we're talking sp specifically biomechanically, and there's a lot of causes of back pain being stress related, or, um, even things like reducing the amount of sleep that you have, having poor nutrition, all these things have an influence yep. on how someone feels, uh, in terms of what, whatever pain it is and largely back pain and neck pain. Those are the two most, uh, two most common areas that are driven by the nervous system. Okay. But, uh, biomechanically speaking, the, the number one thing is looking at, someone's load capacity of a certain body region. And so if I'm looking at someone's low back, low back capacity, and let's say arbitrarily, it's at, let's say roughly 10 for whatever metric you're looking at. And, you know, they, they go through pickle, their pickle routine and, um, they play an hour or two of pickleball and they go to an eight. Of Hold on. First of all, nobody only plays an hour or two. Let's, okay. let's <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm a beginner. I don't know this. You have to correct me. <laughs> it's like definite rookie. Uh, rookie. Definite rookie. Uh, if only you could get away with only playing an hour. That's part of my problem. Oh, interesting. Is overuse. Yeah, yeah. Is the the nature, the social nature of it where uh, if you're going with a foursome or an eight sum, it's like a house of cards. Mm. You all have to be playing for everyone to be able to play. If you take one person out, the whole house falls, mm. right? And so they play for two hours minimum, three hours often. Uh, and anybody playing three hours of anything, that's a lot of exertion. So that makes a lot of sense. And <laughs> The, so what, what you, if you can't control the overall volume yeah. at that point, what you can control is the quantity or the, the quality of the movement as you're playing for you three go. hours. Yes. So then if that's the case, you have to realize where your capacity is at and you have to make sure that you have other areas of your body that can take over. Let's say you do have a history of low back pain like me. I make sure that I have other areas of the body that can take over the, the load of my low back. Maybe I can lower myself further with my knees, for example, or okay. make sure I have appropriate ankle dorsiflexion so that my knees can travel past my toes so that I can load with my knees. And all these things have an influence of how much load you end up putting on your back. Interesting. Um, but the number one thing I would say, if you're talking about like dink battles is making sure both above and below the chain have adequate mobility and strength. Meaning if someone is leaning over and you know they run out of hip mobility, they're going to lean, they're going to move forward with their low back. That's just what's going to happen. Gotcha. So if you have adequate hip mobility and control, you can lower yourself and lean over and take up all your hip motion before you lean over at your low back. Okay. And so, uh, that's, that's like for dinking. Now, if you're hitting it, uh, and you're rotating a, a bit when you're hitting the ball yep. and you don't have adequate thoracic spine or mid back mobility, yep. you're going to have to move from your low back. And your low back isn't really designed to side bend or rotate as much as your mid back is. Hmm. Your low back is designed to more flex and extend in this sagittal plane of motion. Okay. So if you don't have thoracic spine mobility, now you're hitting it. And every time you're loading the low back a little bit more and a little bit more, and you don't want to reduce the amount of playing like three hours is what you're going to do. Then what's going to happen is you're going to stress the low back significantly more. Got it. So there's two things that you can do. Reduce the stress by moving more at your mid back, which is where you should rotate from or decrease the overall volume of, of play from three to two, maybe, um, both can potentially help with reducing this, the stress and strain. And since the second one is a non-starter, because <laughs> yeah. we're all insane and right. we're not going to do that. It's no. almost like I was waiting for you to say, the other thing you could do is play less often to which I was going to be like, ah, well, that was, that was where we were going to go after the, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not possible. Yeah. No, yeah. No. Yeah. So, but uh, what I really love hearing what you're saying also is like a lot of people who start out playing. Like, let's talk about in our daily life, mid like thoracic spine rotation, like yeah. from a, being a functional urbanite or suburbanite, I don't have to rotate my back right. this way very often. So as an adult who has sat at a keyboard or sat in a car, sat, let's just be honest, yep. most, most adults, right, who are playing pickled, uh, they, they sat a lot. This is probably locked up from years of atrophy, non-use, non-activation, whatever the phrase might be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they probably don't even know. I mean, I went through, I'm going through this, what I would call neuromuscular re-education mm -hmm. right now as a 50 year old. Like I didn't move. I never took a step higher than a curb. Mm. So my glutes are just hilarious because they're not there, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, I just inserted a lot of collagen. I went to Brazil. Shh, don't tell anybody. No, I'm kidding. I didn't really do that. But uh, like they're they're totally weak, yeah. you know, uh, from sedentary, you know, yeah. not having to step much. And then I recently I was uh, with one of my trainers who was like, yeah, your mid back doesn't move. Yeah. That's why your low back is and your shoulders are destroyed because everything else is trying to take up the slack. Yep, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about mid back just thoracic spine rotation. How do we do that? How, what, what are some things we could do on a daily basis that don't require us, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Easy, no, easy wins. It, it's something you hit it on the nail. This, this is a movement that through your daily life is almost required to, to no like to zero. Right. No, most people don't actually go through that motion at all unless they have to. And you kind of have to with pickleball, you yeah. have to rotate. Yeah. Um, but the issue is you haven't prepared your body for it. So the 
the approach that you would want to take is first, make sure you have the mobility needed. And then if you improve the mobility, now you need to make sure you have the control to control that newly afforded range of motion that you have. Okay. So the first step is mobility, then control, and then strength. Every Everything in PT comes down to those three pillars. Got it. It's mobility, control, strength. Okay. And so first thing we want to do is improve mobility. Now, uh, for rotation, uh, you, you can start with some more passive ways of improving mobility. Let's say that you are sidelining and you... Um, open your chest towards the wall. It's called the open book exercise mm -hmm. where you rotate open and try to like gravity pull you open. Maybe even like elongate your arms so that your arm can help you open up towards the, uh, towards the ceiling actually. Mm. So that your thoracic spine rotates yep. and you just go back and forth and slowly improve that motion. You can even lock up the top leg onto the floor. So that way you low, you really lock down the, the pelvis and low back and you're moving from top down to allow you to get that thoracic spine ex uh, extension and rotation. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, another way to do this, and this becomes a bit more of the active way, which is where neuromuscular reeducation or control comes into play is doing a uh, thread the needle exercise where you're on your hands and knees and it's the same movement. Now, this time you're rotating with one arm towards the ceiling, yes. bringing your chest up towards the ceiling, yep. but you're using your own muscles to pull yourself up. Yep. And then you slowly lower back down towards the floor and you yep. can even rotate the opposite way yes. as you push in towards the floor. And then uh, if you really want to start building up that neuromuscular control and start going into some strength, you can even use a resistance band and have that resistance band pull you to, uh, away from that position right and then when you pull that band you're opening yourself up using all those thoracic spine rotators and then slowly lowering back down and so you want to find ways that are very easy for you to first just unlock that motion yep you know it's it's hard and it's interesting sometimes i'll even test individuals uh and they'll have appropriate mobility they just don't have the re-education or control to get there. Yeah. And so at that point, we can skip just the passive stretching and then go into the control type movements. Gotcha. But if they don't have, mo and this is most people, they don't have the mobility. Or, yep. And so they're not going to have the control to, to control through that full range because they don't even have the full range unlocked. Right. So the first thing is to unlock that passive range. Okay. And so um, that, that's when the open book comes in. And you can, you can even do um, a, a scorpion stretch is something I like as well because you have a lot of leverage with your leg weights pulling yourself open. Open. It kind of opens your chest and your thoracic spine. Talk me through that one. Yeah, scorpion, scorpion stretch. stretch yeah, okay. so you're you're laying face down. Yeah, one arm is 90, 90 shoulders, shoulders up to ninety, elbow yep. bent to ninety degrees. Yeah, and then your opposite leg is pushing uh, into extension, opening your body away from the the floor. Okay, and so you're you're trying to you're keeping your arm face your your face is down towards the floor. Yeah, but you're trying to rotate your body open from bottom up. Okay. And so that way you actually are moving from your low back to your thoracic spine. So it's a bit different, okay. but it still opens up that, that rotation that you need from your thoracic spine. And you called it scorpion, scorpion stretch stretch. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. So we've got, and you can make it dynamic open book, mm -hmm. thread the needle. Exactly. Scorpion stretch. Yep. yep this yep, will yep. be on the test. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, and you should, uh, notice that after you do a few reps, if it's a dynamic way of, of approaching, which I recommend doing dynamic stretches, okay. uh, you should notice that you get further and further with any of these movements okay. as you do it, even within the set itself. Of course, over the weeks, you'll notice that it becomes a lot easier to just jump into the certain movements. But Can we uh, talk about how to breathe? Oh, yeah. How do I breathe? Because you know a lot of people stop to stop breathing when they of exercise. Course. That's right? so important. Right? So let's say I'm doing um, thread the needle. Yeah. I'm on my hands and knees. Yep. I'm reaching underneath, you know, uh, that other side. And then I'm going up right to the mm -hmm. ceiling. Mm -hmm. Which, where am I breathing in and where am I breathing out? That's a, that's a good example. So, uh, well, is for, there, a, is there a rule that actually helps? Does your breath in terms of like, as you exhale versus inhale, does one of them actually help you extend that stretch? I guess that's yeah, where I'm going yeah. with that. So the reason why the breathing part is so important is because the whole purpose of the stretch is to calm down the nervous system's input into a certain area. Oftentimes the, the stiffness, this is actually interesting. The, the stiffness that you feel with a lot of the muscular restrictions, you're not, when you're stretching, you're not actually lengthening the muscle physiologically. All you're doing is you're changing the nervous system's input to that muscle, which will 
allow you to improve in flexibility. So like, for example, huh. yeah, it's crazy. So for example, if someone, let's say have, has poor hamstring flexibility yeah. and you put them under completely, like you, your, their nervous system is completely shut down yeah. and you do that same hamstring stretch, they're going to have way more flexibility. And that's not a change physiologically. It's not a function of the muscle. It's a function of the nerves. Correct. Whoa. Yeah. We yeah. just went down the rabbit hole. Yeah. That's it's, it's interesting. Crazy. It's crazy. So like all this foam rolling and you yeah. know, dry needling and stretching, whether it's dynamic or static, you know, you, you're not likely changing anything at a physiological level of the muscle. In order to really change that, you have to be casted and it takes many, many weeks right. of staying in right, a certain right, position right. Okay. to physiologically change the muscle. So uh, most oh. likely what people are actually focusing on and why you notice improvement, flex, improvement in flexibility is purely from a nervous system input standpoint. Wow. And so this is why breathing is so important. Now it's your question if if breathing matters or, or where you should be breathing is that when you exhale, that's where you want to focus on the elongation of the muscle. Okay. So let's say you're rotating open. Yep. At that point, as you're rotating open, you want to exhale to maximize. Yep. To maximize that flexibility of all the tissues there. Yeah. And then uh, th th that example is interesting because you're actually stretching both directions. And then I would, I would actually inhale as you're rotating the opposite way. Okay. And then when you get towards the end, I would exhale again. Okay. And then rotate back and forth and, and slowly do this. Okay. It's all about knowing that it's about the nervous system should really get the person to understand how to perform these movements. That's it's all about really interesting. Yeah. That's really cool. So I'm an, a guy who loves an alliteration. So uh, exhale, elongate. Yep. Right. Exactly. Or exhale, extend. Those exactly. two go together. Extend depends on the, this example makes sense, but it depends on the stretch. So for okay. example, if you're doing a child's pose, yep. that's, that's a flexed movement and yep. you're dynamically going into it. Yep. So I would say exhale as you flex, but yeah. it's wherever you're elongating. So elongating yeah, is the word. wherever you're, where, wherever you want to improve the flexibility, let's say I'm stretching my, my calf. As I, as I focus on going into the ankle dorsiflexion yeah. is where I'll focus on exhaling. And is that because when we exhale, that trips the parasympathetic nervous system and that's, it relaxes us? That's exactly and it. And that's the whole idea, right? We're trying to relax the nervous system in that motion to open up that elongation. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Versus when you inhale, typically you're stimulating arousal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Isn't that interesting? Cause that's so funny. Cause when you, when I learn about those systems, mm -hmm. I don't think about how they integrate mm. in this way. Mm. I'm kind of, I remember being taught like from a stress management as a music therapist, like stress mental. Mm -hmm. Right. But now we're talking about the, the flexibility of my muscles and we're calling on the same system to be able to influence that. Like the nervous system is King. It rules, wow. it rules at all mental, physical. And that's why, uh, even when I, I use the whoop and I, uh -huh. I, uh, sometimes I just look at my heart rate as I'm breathing. Yep. As I exhale, when I do long exhales, I'll notice my heart rate drop. Yeah. Boo. Yep. And yep, then, yep. and then, right. And then it immediately jumps back up to yeah. whatever their, their resting baseline is. Yep. And so it's, it's one of those things that you can very easily objectively showcase how much of a change just your breath work has. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely something that has an, an impact. And if you're talking about, you know, uh, effectiveness and, and, you know, someone can probably do five reps with really slow control, good breath work and get better results than, than someone that's doing 15, 20 reps, wow. four times the volume. You know, if you're not doing it right, then, yep. then it ends up being non-effective in terms of your movement. And that's where, you know, the purpose of the movement is very, uh, important. And it's not just a more qu quantity, right. Uh, check. Thing. No, right. not at all. Right. Yeah, exactly. Fascinating. <laughs> yeah. But the thoracic spine is definitely something that's often overlooked and, uh, it'll, it'll definitely save your back if you can improve primarily rotation at, at that area, you know, side bend is also important, but you know, with, with pickleball, most oftentimes people don't have adequate rotation okay. and that's fine. If you, uh, are very stiff to one side, what the research will show in terms of uh, risk for injury is if the total arc is different from someone compared to somebody else, um, then you're at risk for injury. So, uh, there's, there's basically the purpose is to try to unlock your total arc of motion being your rotation to your right 
plus your rotation to the left. And that should be about 70 degrees. Okay. So if you have less than that, that's, that's something that you need to work on. Uh, because the spine can only move so much. And sometimes people have, people have structural changes. Like if you look at um, baseball players, they, yep. they oftentimes, you know, threw a ball for, for many, many years as their body was uh, developing. developing. And, yep. you know, their structure is changed based off of that. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to change it after your body has already developed. So uh, you'll notice that they have a lot of rotation to one side, not so much to the other side. However, if you try to stretch them the opposite direction where they're limited in, yep. you're not going to notice that much improvement because their total arc has already shifted. Huh. And so the goal is to maximize your total, total arc. Total arc. Yeah. Okay. Bo of both sides. Gotcha. That's together. really cool too. Mm -hmm. Great. So if we can remember to unlock our thoracic spine, that's going to take some of the load off our low back. Huge. That's a big one. A big one. And then if we go in the opposite direction... What do we look at below the low back to improve, yeah. to help the low back? This this is a big one as well, um, because for anyone that's listening, you probably sit a long time, like just, just like every, everyone does. It's, and, yeah. and what happens is, you know, uh, you get used to moving at your low back. No one stays in this neutral range of their low back. So when you sit, you're flexed, like I'm sitting right now, I can tell my, my lumbar spine is flexed. I'm, yep. I'm not sitting completely right. neutral. Right. And, and so my body gets comfortable with that motion. And when you are looking at someone that's, that's playing sport, you want to keep a stiff, stiffer core to yep. minimize the dynamic aspect of the low back. So that way you transfer energy well from your upper body to your lower body. And so if, if you think about it, your lower body is the energy generator for a lot of the things that you do from your upper body, whether it's okay. throwing or if you're hitting the yeah. ball, like yeah. it, it's, it's what is initially creating a lot of that momentum and your core transfers that. And so the same, this, the reason I say that is it's similar to what we're talking about here, where if you're lowering yourself down and you're playing the dink game and you don't have that stiff core, yeah. your body's going to take the path of least resistance. And that's likely going to be coming from your low back and where you're going to be flexing your low back, putting additional stress on your low back. So if you're not going to compromise the three hours, at least focus on quality of movement during right. that three hours. How are you moving? So that way you can minimize the amount of load on your low back throughout that period of time. And if you can focus on getting that flexion from your hips, you can get those bigger muscles like your glutes yes. to work, which, you know, uh, they're supposed to be bigger. I know <laughs> a lot of people don't train. Actually, the glutes are the area out of the body, the muscles. It has the smallest area, uh, the smallest real estate in the brain that controls the glutes compared to other muscles. Oh, so inherently it's a hard muscle for people to activate uh -huh. for whatever reason. Okay. And so that's why when sometimes you have people do things like clams or bridges, they're like, maybe I feel my hamstrings, yeah, I feel my low yeah, back, yeah, my yeah, QL, yeah, yeah. like my TF, all these different sure. things, but like, I don't feel my glute. It's like, okay, I get it. It's a very difficult muscle for people to find. Okay. And that's why oftentimes I'll start with just isometrics. Just hold the position, Got it. really get that mind muscle connection. Yes. Yes. Once you get that, then we'll start moving into isotonics where gotcha. you're moving through a range of motion. Gotcha. Um, so if you can learn to, to hip hinge a little bit better okay. and, you know, focus on getting more of the glutes to help out the, the less stress will be placed on your low back yeah. over time. Yeah. And uh, this is something that you kind of have to train yourself in the same way that we train the thoracic spine. So, so the question one is, does the, the person have appropriate hip flexion mobility? Okay. Um, if yes, the next question is, and if no, let's focus on hip flexion. mobility. Okay. If yes, then let's focus on control so they can focus, they can hip hinge and get low while making sure that their core is engaged so they can focus on getting low with the hips. Yeah. And so if you can get lower with the hips, you'll, you'll end up saving the amount of stress that's placed on the low back as well. So when you say get low with the hips, is that like, I'm like physically dropping like the height of my hips, like I'm, I'm sitting a little lower. So yeah. essentially bending more at the knee, bending more at the hip. Yeah. So what I mean by that is you are leaning, leaning, you're hinging at the, the let's take the knees out of the equation. Okay. Let's say the knees are, are stable and you're, you're, we're not fixed. We're, we're fixed there. We're not moving anything. The two ways at that point to yep. get lower is hinging at the hips okay. where you're, you're leaning yeah, forward I'm with your chest through right now. Yep. Like what that feels like. The second is keeping this. the hips locked and then moving at your low back. Oh uh, yeah. So the, f yeah, yeah, you want to move now. from down up. Uh, so the first thing you want to take up is your hip mobility. So okay. if your core is engaged, yep. you're, your spine is relatively neutral yep. and you're leaning forward. Yep. You can take up that hip motion first and then eventually you'll 
you'll take up the low back motion once you run out of the hip motion. Got it. But you don't want to move at the low back before your hips. Right. Okay. And and I don't want to um, scare people from moving at the low back because that's going to happen. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And you know you you can build up capacity of loading the back and moving at the back. But when we're, what we're talking about right now is is minimizing risk of uh, back issues. So the goal would be to uh, use your hips a bit more. And now I don't think that it's it makes sense for someone to be so focused while they're playing that they need to work on moving at the right, hips right. and then eventually then they're dumping. No. Yeah, they're not playing well. No, no, no you, you don't want to be thinking. That's not what you should be thinking right. about when you're, you're just like, chasing a ball like a Labrador retriever. Yeah. That's what we're. That's all we're thinking about when we're out there. Yeah, <laughs> like a Labrador. Yeah, right, right. And Chase. It's, <laughs> no, you're focused on the game. You're That's focused it. on winning. That's it. And uh, and having a good time, of course. Yeah. But the the reason I bring that up is that you can train your body outside of the court yes. to do these movements. And eventually, it's it's conscious at first, but eventually becomes subconscious yep. where this becomes your movement pattern. Yep. And so when we're talking about thoracic spine, the better control and mobility you have, the easier it is for your body to naturally find that, that rotation there. And same yep. thing with the hips the better mobility and control you have of lowering yourself from there, the better off you'll be in terms of moving on the court. Yep. And the knees are, the, the knees can, can bend as well. Usually the more that you drive the knees forward and the more you load the knees, the more erect your trunk is. Yep. So let's think of a front squat. That's yep. someone who has their knees go more forward okay. than let's say a, bar, a barbell back squat. At that point, their knees don't go so far forward, rather their trunk goes forward. Okay. So that's going to load the hips a bit more. The front squat will load the knees a bit more. So it's just a matter of how someone likes to move. And okay. um, I would say uh, using yeah, loading the knees will reduce the amount of load on your hips and low back. But I don't think that's that's a realistic way of lowering yourself to, to hit a ball that's low. Gotcha. And you're going to have to move from your hips and yep. low back eventually as well. Yep. And neutral spine is a range. That's something that uh, has been found in the literature recently where, you know, it's impossible to keep your low back from flexing. It's going to flex. It's going to move. Right. It's just a man. Even to the visual eye, if it looks neutral, it's probably not. It's going to move. Okay. But it's a range. So you just want to avoid really going into, especially when you're training heavy, uh, going into full lumbar spine or low back flexion. Uh, when you're doing like a heavy barbell back squat, or if you're constantly reaching down, you want to avoid going into that end range position. Um, over, over when you're talking about a large volume of movement. Okay. Um, so that way you can play a lot longer and yep. you can get that three hours in day after day and minimize the risk of, of stressing that area. Is there an exercise we can do off the court that educates us to move from the hip rather than the low back? Yep. Yeah. So, so I would say the, uh, let's say, let's say first we want to make sure we have the mobility there. Yep. So I think something like a world's greatest stretch is a very, uh, basic way of getting the hips moving in all different directions. Have you done that one? And what is yeah, the world's doing. greatest stretch? I mean, inquiring minds want to know yeah, when you call yeah. it that. You're the, like, what? Yeah, yeah. So, I must know. <laughs> so there, there's a lot of different uh, portions of it. The most important piece, and the reason why I bring this up for the hips, is uh, when you're in a high plank position, like a like a tall like tall plank position, like a push up position. Okay, like a push up. Yeah, position. let's say push up okay. position. Yep. You you bring one foot as high as you can towards your arm. Let's talk, let's talk about the right side. Okay. My right foot comes all the way up towards my right hand. Okay. And then from here, I'm driving my right elbow down towards my right heel. And so what I want to do here is lower myself as much as I can so that I get as far into this hip flexed position uh -huh, as possible. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This knee is going to get pretty close. My right knee is going to be get pretty close to touching my chest. Wow. And that's the goal. Okay. So that I maximize how much hip flexion mobility I have. Okay. And then the opposite side is back there. So it's it's kind of minimizing my low back from rounding too much. It's kind of locking the pelvis out. Gotcha. Uh, but the idea is to get as deep as possible. And you'll actually, this is something that I think improves fairly quickly. Like at first, some people will not even be able to try to lower their elbow. They'll just keep their elbows locked down. And they're like, that's all I have. I got it. And then eventually they'll be able to slowly lower down to where their elbow can get towards their right heel. Okay. And um, it happens fairly quick. And same thing here. It's a mobility thing. So what do we want to focus on? Breath. Focus on really elongating that exhale, relaxing your body, and then get deeper and deeper with each rep. Wow. And you can you can go through 
this exercise dan dynamically or statically. And that's just the first of many positions of the world's greatest stretch. It's uh, there, there's kind of a lot of moving parts. Uh, I'd be bad at explaining <laughs> it over this, but there, that was, that's the most important part for hip flexion, which is, which okay. is the focus here. And then uh, to your question with the control, uh, there's a lot of hip hinging movements. I think with, uh, with pickle, pickleball, you want to focus on doing this uh, both, with both legs and with one leg. Okay. So something like a uh, Romanian deadlift would be a great way to build that up where okay. your your knees are relatively locked out. You're in a standing position, uh, standing position. Let's say you're just standing up tall. Yep. And then you're bringing your chest down towards the floor, keeping your low back straight. Yep. So you're minimizing the amount of flexion going coming from your low back. Yep. Rather, you're moving from the hips. Okay. And once you get far down enough, you'll notice that your hamstring should be pulling you a little bit yep. if, if you're not bending at your low back. If you round the low back and you posteriorly tilt your pelvis, you won't feel the stretch in the hamstring, but that's not the point of this. Gotcha. We want to keep the pelvis neutral. You okay. don't want to tilt. So once you go far, far enough, you'll notice, oh, I feel a little pull in the hamstring yep. and then you slowly come back up. Okay. And, uh, and that one's, that one's a great way just to slowly start building up the control I would definitely work into doing uh, more of a single leg version of that. Oh. I think that's a great way to uh, also build up balance okay. and uh, it'll allow you to go through a much deeper range. And when you come up, you want to, I recommend when people do this single leg RDL, they come up tall and try to balance on that one leg the whole time. Okay. They don't bring the opposite leg down at all. Ah, so okay. uh, if the goal is strength, then that's a different story than at that point, you don't need to, you don't need to focus on balance at all. I would, okay. I would separate the two, but when, when we're talking about control, yep. I would focus on uh, balancing through the whole thing really getting as deep as you can. So and what does that look like? One yeah. legged? Yep. 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 So, so you're, yeah, let you're me. standing up, right? Exactly. So you're standing up tall. Yep. Uh, one knee is up towards your chest and then you reach over towards the floor. You get as far down as you can. Sometimes I'll put some elevated surface in front of them. Okay. You know, like we have a coffee table here. Maybe they come down, touch the, touch the coffee table. Okay. That back, that, that leg that's in the air now kicks towards the back wall. Okay. And then you slowly come back up, pulling with the muscles on the back of your stability leg, so your hamstrings and glutes, until you come back all the way up tall. All right. And then that knee comes up towards your chest here. Uh, and then you repeat back and forth. And as you lower yourself, that that elevated leg kicks back out again. back this way. Exactly. I'm visualizing somebody picking up a ball, uh, a golf ball yeah. out, of, out of the cup. Yeah. After yeah, yeah. they've sank a putt. Exactly. That back leg goes boop, like a counterbalance. Exactly. You know? Like yeah. that's the what this, this leg's doing, but it's bent. It's going back underneath as we're hinging mm -hmm. and leaning over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a great way to. Uh, I think they they a little golf applause in the background. <laughs> there's the there, there's a there's a term that people use for that style of picking things up from the floor. Okay. Um, it, it has to do with the golf. I, f I forget. Okay. But. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. Yeah, we'll appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be helpful. I forget. Um, but yeah, that's that's a great way to build up hip flexion control. Okay. And uh, which I think is is very important for I mean for for really any athlete, but especially when you're talking about someone that needs to improve control of this to minimize stress on the low back so we did the world's greatest stretch mm -hmm. mobility yeah and then we're doing the romanian deadlift yep did i miss control. one in between no, the, no the, those the, are the two the, right yeah basically we talked through a double leg version and a single one leg, leg. Version. yep so that's going to help with the hips and then when we talked about the thoracic spine we did the open book and we did the thread the needle yep exactly. and then there was a third one um there's a scorpion stretch scorpion yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to Google that one. Yeah, I, I, I imagine you might have a video about that somewhere. Yep, yep, <laughs> we definitely do. <laughs> yeah, so just That's... go onto YouTube and type in prehab, and we'll find your channel. Yeah, and yeah. then look for Scorpion, Scorpion Stretcher. Stretcher. It's got to be there. It's got to be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, somewhere one of the many thousands. That's right. Yeah. The seven thousand videos. That's like you know the yeah. fish that was that big. You know, yeah. However right. many it is, it's in the it's in the thousands. That's, yeah, that's what I remember. Maybe Sounds it was about right. One point four. That's, doesn't sound as cool as seven. Just telling stories over here. Oh, well. that's funny. Um, but yeah, but th those are looking above and below. I definitely think that there are a lot of things that you can do specifically at the low back as well. Okay. That that we we didn't touch on, but All I right. want to I want to make sure that people understand that uh, these are ways that we're talking about 
outside of the low back, which I think can save a lot of low back issues. Yep. And also when we're talking about someone that's dealing with low back issues, like if I spend the time, like myself, uh, if I spend the time improving my hip and mobility, uh, both control and activation, um, I, I do notice a difference in terms of how my back feels even throughout the day if I don't play pickleball. But if I play pickleball, of course, it's even more drastic because the difference is, is more obvious to me uh, with how much load gets placed on my back. Gotcha. And so these, these are easy ways to do, to do things both from a rehab, rehab and prehab standpoint for the low back. But there's plenty of things that, you know, you want to feed the low back as well with a lot of movement because motion is lotion for the body. Motion is and, lotion and, for the body. You heard <laughs> it here first. That's so good. Yeah. So good. And, and you have to feed it. It's one of those it's things. True. It's like, you know, people wake up, oh, I feel stiff in the morning. Why do you feel stiff? Well, you didn't move at all. Of course, you're going to feel stiff. Yeah. So what's going to happen if you move? You're going to feel less stiff. So uh, what if you move more? You're going to feel even better. Yeah. Uh, there's obviously a dose of the poison. You don't want to do too much of it. Yep. But you want to find ways to move at that area as well. Okay. And, you know, the back is, we talked about before, it's largely designed to go in, to move in this sagittal plane, front and back motion. So you want to do these basic movements like cat-cow. Cat, such an easy movement that you yeah. can do that gets the back moving really through its entire range. Yeah. And, uh, and also, and for those who don't know what that is, uh, it's yeah. a, it's a very easy technique that's hands straight down yep. on your knees and you're again with the breath. Yeah. Are you, does it matter which way you're breathing yeah. in or breathing out? That's well, a good, that's a good question. So, so as so, you arch your back and you tuck your tailbone in, are you exhaling as you're pushing that back up or are yeah, you inhaling? Yeah. Does yeah, it that's, matter? See, this is one of those examples like the uh, thread the needle uh -huh. where you're actually, actually stretching both, into both, both directions. directions. That's right. So, yes, you are. So uh, what? So like. Yeah. You could do sorta, that. Like, yeah, right? you, could, you could definitely do that, if you're, especially if you're going slow. And yeah. I, I actually prefer to do that when I've taken a lot of different classes, like even yoga classes yep. or, or whatever it may be. A lot of times they focus on the exhale as they're arching for whatever reason. Oh, okay. But what I like to first figure out is what is it that I'm working on with that individual? And let's say they have poor extension. So I want to emphasize the extension by having them exhale as they extend Gotcha. And then I have them inhale as they flex. Okay. And it would be the opposite if I really wanted to focus on flexion. Most people don't need more flexion. I feel like most people are good on that. Oh, yeah. It's you're really going in this bit. way that they have a hard time. Typically. Yeah. Gotcha. Typically. Because everyone's I know that to be day. true for me. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm everyone's. Like, yeah. I'm stuck. Which is why your statement earlier with breathing out when you're extending is almost always true because you're living in this flex position. Your hips flex, your knees are flexed, your shoulders are flexed, your okay. elbows flex. Everything is in this flex position. So it's kind of the opposite that you want to go into. Uh, it's reverse posturing. Uh, you're in this posture all day. Yeah. yeah. So you want to reverse that position. You want to open that up. Exactly. So. Okay. Funny um, story. ADD moment yeah. on my, uh, on my bachelor party, <laughs> I, I went skydiving. Oh, wow. Uh, and, um, you, I was like, you know, attached to the instructor. Mm. Right. And so we're on the ground beforehand and he goes, okay, I want you to arch your back. And I said, okay. And I arched my back and then he goes, so whenever you're ready, go ahead and arch your back. And I'm like, I, I right. am right now. Yeah. And he's like, well, that's going to be a problem because when you fall, you have to have an arched back to control the fall or else you'll tumble out of control and we'll die. Damn. And I was like, well, that might be an issue because this is all you get. I had scars on my shins for years from his combat boots, raking my shins, pulling my body as we were hurtling to the ground to get my body to extend yeah. because it didn't. It, it just happen. wouldn't extend. No, I, I could do that all day. Yeah. But to do this was just like, ha, 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 nope. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I still have these like, seemed like a good idea at the time moments when I think back to how uh, death defying that was. But <laughs> yeah, scars for years from him trying to keep us from dying uh, because my body wouldn't extend. That is an extreme example, ladies and gentlemen. We're not recommending uh, parachuting while pickleballing on this channel. That's that's rough. That's yeah. anyhow. Back to our our, our, our regular that's, programming. That's 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 interesting. <laughs> I didn't know you had to do that. Um, now you do. You're yeah. welcome. Extension is important. Extension Turns out it's important. It's important, and and that makes sense from even your your hip standpoint because your hips, if they don't have extension, you can't really kick your leg back. Nope. So uh, nope. You you kind of need that extension there, but yeah. 
Uh, but Who yeah, I, I, <laughs> this might yeah. keep you alive the next time someone invites you on a, you know, bachelor party that doesn't involve a strip club yeah. and you're like, we're doing what? Oh yeah, that's right. Tim told me I really need to arch and extend. Okay. Okay. Like yeah. my life depends on it. That's, that's this funny. moment brought to you by ADD. Oh, that's funny. Now back to our program. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically the, the cat cows are great for largely the extension portion <laughs> as, you as you can tell. Uh, Thanks for it, bringing it back. That's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Where were we? Yeah. Cat so, cow. So, so if you don't have the extent let's say you have great great extension then yeah go mo- focus on going into flexion and if you really really can't get that motion just focus on moving at the pelvis the pelvis and low back or they, they move off of one another that's why it's called the lumbopelvic region okay so if you just focus on the pelvis your low back will follow so arch arch your low arching your low back is synonymous with an anterior tilt of the pelvis and then the opposite is true as well posterior tilt flexes the low back so if you just start with the pelvis your low back will follow and then eventually you can get your whole spine into it where you're arching your entire spine people will even look up towards the ceiling as they arch yeah and then they round so that way you get your your lumbar spine thoracic spine and your cervical spine which is your neck yep. all in one sweep um, back and forth right so that's like a good activation control type type movement. So and let's say it's like my morning routine. Yeah. Um, you know, how many of those? I could do them on my bedroom floor. If, yeah. You know, like five a day, yeah. 10. Like yeah. what do you, like just warming uh, yeah. the body up, loosening the body, moving the body. I'd say if you, if you go what slow, do you recommend? I'd say five, five is adequate. Okay. Yeah. I, well, like so, like a great uh, mobility routine. Let's say you're, you're waking up. Uh, I, I try to keep that routine to three to five minutes, nothing too much. That yeah. way I'm not asking too much from people. Yes. And that's where something like a, a world's greatest stretch one minute at each side, uh, does pretty much everything from your hips up to your mid back, which well, I know. Yeah. I, it's yeah. the world's greatest. It's stretch. The world. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is one minute. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, one minute aside, <laughs> one minute aside uh, and then, of the world's greatest. And stretch. then if there is a, an issue that you're dealing with or something that you're really careful with, like it would say you have a history of low back pain yep. and it's, it's fine right now. I'd still try to give it some love with something like a cat cow. Okay. That way you can go through that, that motion and, you know, it's the opposite of feeling stiff because you're moving it. And so the capacity is kind of a little bit larger throughout that day than let's say if you, if you didn't do it at all. Yeah. And, uh, if you do have a limit a limitation, let's say in thoracic spine rotation, maybe throw in a little bit extra of that thread, the needle, yeah. I would do the same thing, like five reps, at least up to 10 reps. Yeah. If you do it very slow and controlled, you should notice that after that, that one set, you should improve. Yeah. And if it's not, and let's say you're still feeling stiff, then yeah, take a couple seconds and then and then get right back into it and you know go for a second set. Gotcha. Yeah, that's but, great. Yeah, just and it's it's very uh, it's one of those things where you just reassess and see if it's improving. Let's say you're focused on thoracic spine rotation. If if it is improving as you're doing the stretch, then then great. And if it's not, then maybe go back to the drawing board and see what else you can do to improve that rotation. Gotcha. There's a lot of different exercises that you can do to improve a certain mobility limitation. So. Yeah. And if you're kind of feeling overwhelmed, gee, where could you go online to learn more from <laughs> prehab? Yeah, actually the the app that we have, I forgot to mention this initially, but there's, yeah. a, there's a body scan where let's say you're not sure what to do. You're like, uh, I, f- I'm, I kind of have aches all over. Maybe right. it's my low back, but I don't know exactly what i need to do yep. uh there's a body scan that you go through that asks you certain questions and okay. you know you choose your low back you talk about it based on the questions that we have and then it gives you a recommendation uh, really a program recommendation yeah that's cool that way you don't have to think about all these different pieces of content that we have and what's the appropriate piece for you right and so that way it's, it takes you to a certain path and then you can just go through that path okay yeah yeah that's pretty slick <laughs> yeah it makes it easy so that way you don't have to you know, there's a paralysis by analysis yes. with all the content that's online that's that we right. talked about. With the 7,000 videos. 7,000, uh, yeah. <laughs> I should just keep putting the number higher as we're talking. Yeah, so right. Like 22,000. So it's just by growing. The time, that's of it. Of course. Like, it was their spirit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that does make it a lot easier. So the app, they can find the app uh, in the Apple. App Store, App Apple, Store. Google Play. Yeah. And yeah. it's called? Uh, it's Prehab. Prehab. Prehab, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And uh, the website would be the prehabguys.com slash membership. Okay. Uh, and then I can even, I can even put a code in, I can send it to you. Great. And then, yeah, use a free 30 day trial, yep. let's say. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And then follow you on Instagram at, at the prehab guys, prehab guys yep, and yep. on YouTube. Same thing. Same. At the yeah, I think, guys. I think all the channels are at the prehab guys, yep. uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, prehab audio experiences, the podcast. 
Brilliant. I think that's everywhere. Oh, there's a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, how often does that come out? The podcast? Yeah. Um, Dylan is our host. Okay. He's, he's great. Great content on there. The podcast is set at two times a month. Okay. So every that's two like weeks. This. Great. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. We did it weekly, but I think we, we yeah, we shifted it. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Even with the three of us initially, it's weekly still, was a lot. It's yeah. a lot. It's, it, it's, it's, yeah. 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 So yeah. We, we changed it up a bit. Fair. You'll, you'll hear no judgment from me. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot. Well, listen, Arash, it has been so great having you on Pickleball Recovery. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, of course. Woo-hoo. Thanks again. Thanks so much for listening. Do you want to know the number one mistake picklers make that leads to increased pain, soreness, stiffness, and injury? Just head over to www.pickleballrecovery.com and download my free guide to playing with less pain and more enjoyment. Listen, Pickleball makes us feel young at heart, but not necessarily young in body. So go download my free guide at www.pickleballrecovery.com. See you next time.